Hey boys and girls, Mrs. Rocha here. Hope you're having a good day today. We are going to read another chapter of Encyclopedia Brown. And today we are reading the case of the painting gerbils. The painting gerbils. I was intrigued by that title. How about you? So just, you know, listening to the title, can you tell me uh, what, what do you think the author's purpose was in this story? Is it to uh, inform, persuade, or entertain? Think about that, and then after we read it, we'll see if you were right. On the day the summer art show opened, Mark Reardon trotted into the Brown Detective Agency. He was alone. Immediately, Encyclopedia smelled trouble. Mark seldom went any place without Herman and Sherman, his gerbils. Mark's father ran a training school for pets and always said, I never met a problem gerbil. But Encyclopedia guessed that the gerbils had a problem. Is Herman hurt, he inquired, or Sherman? Just their pride, replied Mark. They've been insulted. Somebody told on them. Told what, asked Sally. That they're gerbils, said Mark. Nobody would mistake them for kangaroos, remarked Encyclopedia. I mean, don't they like being gerbils? Yes, but they want to be artists too, said Mark. Read this. He handed Encyclopedia a newspaper story. It told about a Texas chimpanzee named Manfred Simpson. Manfred was allowed to throw fruit against a sheet of wood. After a month, the wood was caked with goo. His owner had called the mess Earth Mother and had entered it in an art show in Chicago. Earth Mother won first prize. Before the world discovered it was done by an ape, the painting was bought for $15,000 by a museum in New York. I get it, said Encyclopedia. What a chimp can do, two gerbils can do. You better believe it, said Mark. But somebody told the judges at the art show this morning that Herman Sherman is really two gerbils. The judges wouldn't accept their painting. Who told, asked Sally. I'm sure it was either Farnsworth Grant or Jerry Tillerson or Scott Wells, said Mark. They were the only ones beside me and my folks who knew that Herman, who knew what Herman and Sherman can do. Mark laid 25 cents on a gas can by encyclopedia. I want to hire you to find out which one is the dirty snitch, he said. All three are my pals, or were. Two days ago, they played over at my house. One of them must have stolen a peek at Herman and Sherman's painting. The detectives went with Mark to his house. Encyclopedia wanted to look at the gerbils' workshop. Mark led them through the kitchen and into the garage. On the floor was a large piece of plywood covered with many colors. One corner was cut off. It's really pretty good for modern art, said Encyclopedia in surprise. My dad said most of it is too good, replied Mark. He said that if the judges thought it was beautiful or looked like something, the gerbils wouldn't win a prize. So he sawed off the worst part and entered that in the show. Your dad knows the secret of modern art, said Encyclopedia. I don't understand how the gerbils do it, said Sally. You might say they finger paint it, answered Mark. I spill cans of different colors on the wood, then Herman and Sherman slide their paws around. It's their hobby. Cleaning them afterward must be hard, said Sally. Nah, the paint has a water base, said Mark. All I do is squirt them with an electric water pick. You suspect Farnsworth Grant or Jerry Tilson or Scott Wells of telling on them, said Encyclopedia. Why? All three knew Herman and Sherman are artists, said Mark. He explained that the day before yesterday. The four boys had been together to his sunroom. Farnsworth and I played ping pong, he said. Scott watched television. Jerry read. Suddenly Jerry asked what misled meant. We all thought it was the past tense of missile. Jerry went into the kitchen and looked up the word in the dictionary that mom keeps by her cookbooks and shouted back the meaning. Jerry could have opened the door to the garage and peeked at the gerbil's painting, said Sally. 
and so could have Scott and Farnsworth, said Mark. Farnsworth banged his wrist on the edge of the ping-pong table. It was just a scratch, but he ran to the kitchen to use the first aid kit. What about Scott? asked Sally. He went last and stayed longest. He wanted a drink of ice water, but he had trouble, he said, getting the ice out of the ice tray. So at one time or another, all three boys were alone in the kitchen, mused Sally. Did they know that the dictionary and the first aid kit are kept there? Yep, they've used them both before, replied Mark. Sally looked discouraged. Perhaps the tattletale is someone else completely. Uh-uh, said Mark. Consider this. Each of the three boys had good reason for knocking the gerbil's masterpiece out of the art show. Scott's mother entered a painting, and so did Farnsworth's grandmother and Jerry's sister. Being beaten by a pair of gerbils would be hard to take, said Encyclopedia. Sally sighed. We don't have one real clue. All three boys had an excuse for going into the kitchen alone. But one had a phony excuse, said Encyclopedia. Sally gasped. Have you proof? The proof, said Encyclopedia, is still in the kitchen. What was... The proof. What was the proof? Okay, you have any idea what the proof could be while I turn to page 91. Okay, here we go. Solution to the case of the painting gerbils. The dictionary was the proof. Misled is not the past tense of M-I-S-L-E. There's no such word as M-I-S-L-E in the dictionary. Yet, Jerry called back the meaning to the boys so he knew what the word meant before he walked into the kitchen. Misled is the past tense of mislead, which means to lead in the wrong direction. Jerry was the snitch. He went into the kitchen so that he could open the door to the garage and see what Herman and Sherman's painting looked like. Thus, he was able to tell the judges which painting was done by the gerbils. Mm, don't be a snitch. Snitches get stitches. Anyway, just joking around there, guys. Um, so what was the author's purpose in this book? Was it to inform, entertain, or persuade? It is to entertain. Because we know that this isn't a story about a real kid that is solving, you know, mysteries. It could be, so it's realistic fiction. Because there's not talking animals or anything silly. This is something that could happen, right? And the author's purpose was to entertain. All right, guys. Well, hope you have a great rest of the day. Remember that I care about you and I think about you all the time and I wish I could see your beautiful faces in person. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye.